Traditionally, logistics was broken down into different modules. So you've got sales and distribution, materials management, production planning, and then on the sidelines, you have quality management and plant maintenance as well. And a traditional ECT 6.0 suite is made up of this whole portfolio. So you have the accounting, the cost applications, and the human resources as well. But logistics is traditionally made up of those modules. S4 HANA Enterprise Management Suites do encompass the traditional logistics modules of SAP, mostly SD, MM and PP, but it's transitioning them and moving more into business scenarios, which I'll go into a bit more in detail on later. The new enterprise management is broken down. There's procure to play, plan to produce, order to cash and request to service. And all of those are across new devices, across new services breaking into new markets. We've had a huge explosion of data over the last few years. With S4 HANA Enterprise Management, you can use that data efficiently, get reporting much more easily, and it's usable across multiple devices, so it's not just one server in a company anymore. That's the only way you can get your reporting from. S4 HANA Enterprise Management is acceptable across multiple devices and user-friendly across all of them as well. S4 HANA Enterprise Management allows for agile planning. The downtime that on-premises suite solutions have, this doesn't happen with S4 HANA Enterprise Management. Changes can be made during live operation. If stock or if a supplier goes out of stock and that needs to be reflected immediately, there doesn't need to be any downtime for that. So there's agile planning with Enterprise Management. Different logistics processes can be simulated, so different scenarios can be imagined before they happen, meaning that a client can imagine different scenarios and see what effect that will have on other suppliers or the other areas within that business, and then find a solution for that before it happens. And that means it's proactive rather than reactive. Up-to-date data is displayed. Changes can be seen immediately, again allowing for a faster reaction and another important aspect is that books can be closed at any time with accurate profit and loss. So as a recruitment agency, we obviously speak to the consultants working through us very regularly. And we've had a number of consultants who consistently have a stressful end of month because they're working very hard to close the books. S4 HANA Enterprise Management is looking to change this to move away from that month end by giving people the option to close the books at any time. And there will be the accurate profit and loss right there and then. So it doesn't need to be a stressful end of month thing anymore. It can be an efficient month over the month run process rather than having to wait to the end of the month to get things done in time. So how is it connected? S4 HANA Enterprise Management is connected across the whole SAP portfolio from the Internet of Things devices to big data. It runs on a HANA platform which allows for efficient and simplified data extraction with instant insight. So with HANA, there's one single source of truth, which means that reporting is a lot more efficient, a lot more streamlined, and the clients have access to the data straight away rather than having to wait for those reports to be generated. And then it all runs on a Fury platform, so the quality of the user experience is increased across all devices. Again, not just that one server sitting in the company. If someone's traveling a lot and needs to do something on their iPads, they have the flexibility to do it because the role-based user experiences across all devices. So if you're coming from a traditional logistics background, what would you learn based on your experience? It, it's quite hard to say at the moment because of the way that S4 HANA Enterprise Management is being rolled out. As we mentioned before, SAP are moving away from the modular approach and they're moving towards the processes approach. So you can see procure to pay, plan to product, order to cash and request to service. These are more business scenarios rather than something, someone coming in as a sales and distributing consultant. So it might be that if you have 10 years of experience with SD, you might be better placed going in and doing all the cash because that's where your experience lies. But based on our knowledge of what the certification will include, you'll need to be knowledgeable across all of the areas to be an S4 HANA Enterprise Management Consultant. And it would probably be the case that once you have the certification, you'd then specialize in one of those areas. But SAP are focusing a lot more on certifications. They're putting a lot more importance on certifications to make sure the consultants who claim that they're certified in a topic are certified in the whole area rather than just being an expert in one particular subdivision. 
in the coming section, I'll help you walk through the most important components in the enterprise management in S4 HANA or logistics in ECC 6.0. Okay, it's time to look at logistics. So let's have a look at how exactly logistics works. I'd like to show you how you can leverage this flowchart to explain the high level workflow of logistics in a short time frame. I want to give you a way to understand what's going on within logistics function. So that includes sales distribution, material management and production planning. So you can decide if you want to learn more about how to improve function knowledge or ACE an SAP job interview. Let's dive right into it. To help you better understand the process, let's assume you're the general manager of a computer manufacturer. At this time of the year, your salesperson, Lisa, is making a sales plan for next year. Let's assume the standard computer memory is 4 gigabits, and one of the customers in Lisa's territory wants to order a batch of PCs with 8 gigabit memory. In order to seize this opportunity, we've got to customise our standard products. So, Lisa creates a sales order in the sales and distribution module. For sales planning purposes, the planner, Jenny, will process make to order because they've got to know and design the bill of material and routing. And then the planners can run material requirement, planning to calculate the quantities of raw materials. Then the process is going to flow to material management module. And in this module, the demands of raw materials are going to transfer to purchase department. The buyer of your company, Mike, who's responsible for making a purchase, will create purchase orders and go ahead and purchase the raw materials from your vendors. Your company inspectors in the quality department will inspect the raw materials that Mike has just ordered on the market when they arrive at the company. After the quality check, the raw materials that meet your standards will be moved to storage locations and the unqualified raw materials will return to vendors. Then your planner, Jenny, will assign tasks to the production lines based on the production line capacity. And in the world of SAP, we call this process capacity planning. Meanwhile, your keeper in the warehouse will also send raw materials or semi-finished products to the production lines by shop floor control. Now, when we've done all the routing to make this batch of computers, we're going to deliver quality assurance to the finished goods. And the qualified finished goods will be distributed to Lisa's customer and the ones that didn't pass the quality check will be reworked or then scrapped. You, as the boss of this computer manufacturer, from a management perspective, want to monitor the real-time logistics status and corporate value flows by an information system and production reports.